Infamous bank robber John Dillinger is rumored to have stashed cash and savings bonds on his father's farm in Mooresville, Indiana. Now, a search team being led by ex-FBI agent Stuart Fillmore is on the case. You think there might be something significant hidden here at the farm? Yes, we do. We do, yes. I think the best source is a legend from the Dillinger family themselves. Mike Thompson is Dillinger's nephew, and Travis is his great-nephew. Really? <laughs> I'm the closest living relative other than my sister that can say, you know, John's father is our grandfather. Wow. You're not going to rob me, are you? Not yet. OK. <laughs> <laughs> this was a family story, that there was money hidden here at the farm. Yeah, there was always stories amongst the family that there was definitely could have been money hid. With generations of family reports that loot was buried on the farm, the team begins to search the property. Stewart's shovel smashed a buried mason jar. What they found inside may rewrite the story of public enemy number one. Are you kidding me? A 1934 shell roadmap. This was inside this jar? Inside the jar. And do we know anything about the jar? It's also from the same time period. Uh, it was manufactured between 1923 and 1933. And you dug this up where? Just a few feet from here on the property. This is so crazy to me. Be prepared to look back in history. You ready? Oh, look at this. Yep. It's marked up. It is. This really has an excellent chance of being an authentic part of this Dillinger story. It is. This is really, really cool. It's an untold story. And especially with the stories that money was buried on this farm, that may mean that there's more here to find. That's actually the next stage of our investigation, is to scan with GPR, ground penetrating radar, metal detect it, um, and, and really do a thorough search. I'm ready to work. Let's go. Everybody pick up a shovel. Come on. We gear up to scour the old Dillinger property. With a ton of ground to cover, we divide and conquer. Mike and I work our way along the edge of the property, while Stuart, Shane, and Travis search in what used to be the Dillinger Orchard. Got a good hit here. There it is. The oh, wrench. The wrench. Found a wrench. <laughs> Found a wrench. We're one bolt away from a, from a home improvement project right now. <laughs> Man, it looks pretty old to me. This is about where the barn was. OK. Could have been granddad's tool. That would make sense. Yeah. Well, we're finding stuff. It's a start. To kick this search into high gear, Shane is bringing out the big guns, ground penetrating radar. They're radio waves. They generate from the box. They go down. Once they hit an object, it bounces back up and displays on our screen. We're looking for evidence of ground that's been churned up where something might have been buried. And so here in Indiana, in this kind of soil, you're typically able to see down about how far? Four to six feet. Four to six feet. Stewart and his team continue to search with metal detectors, working their way into a gully the bulky radar can't reach, while I run tracks on the flat ground. Oh, wow. Oh, Whoa. big hit. Oh, look at that. Even I can tell that that is an anomaly. We're looking at right about two feet down. We got something over here. The Ginger Beard Club is on fire <laughs> today. I think there's a good chance, by the way, that Mike and I might be related. Does anybody else see that? <laughs> the signature is strong. So we dig it right away. Something there. OK, let's see what we got here. It is a giant rock. OK. We flag more anomalies with the radar. Hit something. Huge rock. And unearth more buried boulders. Is what that is. Can you guys just dig a hole big enough for me and just lay me down on it? Is that possible? Sure. Appreciate that. Meanwhile, in the ravine. All right, what do we got here? Oh, is that a bee? That is a bee. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Stuart for Josh, come in. Go for Josh. Josh, uh, can you come down to the gully? We found something really exciting. You've got to see it. We've got an intact 
mason jar. OK, I'm coming down. I'll be right back. OK, I'm coming on my way. Josh, you got to see this. Look. Oh, look at that. It's the exact same it's kind. It's the exact same one. Look. Well, that's incredible. We want to be as delicate as we can sure. um, to, to pull this out. So we're going to dig around it very, very carefully and brush as we go and remove this dirt. We got another jar. And there's oh. another jar oh. beside it. It looks to be substantially intact as well. Look, right here. We got a lid oh, on this. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. The team has uncovered a cache of ball jars from the Dillinger era, mere feet from where the mysterious map was discovered. It looks clear underneath. Yeah, come on. Like pulling a fish out of the water. Come on, you got it. Oh, you got it. Oh, oh, oh. There it is. It's Look intact. at that. That's just awesome. Isn't that great? That's awesome. That is the same color as the map jar. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. OK, so I'm going to hand this to you very carefully. That jar could have been down there at least 87 years. Do you see anything in there? No, but there's a lot of uh, compacted dirt still in there. Right. But it doesn't look like anything significant in there. No, no. We got another one next to it here that's a lot looser. Smaller. Yeah. Intact with the lid on. It's a little bit of debris in the bottom. It almost looked like two pieces of metal. Ooh. I can't believe you can turn that. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that it's in this kind of condition is yeah. just absolutely remarkable. Let's see what else is in this hole. Beneath the first three jars, we find shattered glass and compelling evidence that something was hidden inside. Cloth here. Oh, wow. Look at this. Is it inside a jar? Yes. There yes, is... it was in glass. So this is the bottom of a jar. This was potentially in a jar. Like stuff down in a jar. Uh -huh. There's metal right beneath it. Oh, hold on. I got metal. Metal, metal, metal. We got a coin, I think. That's it, right there. That's unbelievable. No, it's not a coin. It's too wide to be a coin. You know what that is? That is a shotgun shell. That's the back of a case. That's exactly. That primer cap has been dented in, which means this was fired on the Dillinger property. This isn't a modern shotgun shell. Exactly. Is... What does it say on the head stamp? Winchester repeater. 20 gauge. 20 gauge, right there in the 20 middle, gauge. 20 gauge. That is insane. <laughs> <laughs> this style shotgun shell was produced from 1896 to 1938, which puts us right in the heart of the Dillinger era. When you think Dillinger. Yeah. You think guns. You, you think, think guns. guns. I mean, you, you, you do. You, you do. Yeah. Dillinger himself yeah. or his father yeah. may have shot this. Well, it makes it personal. The closest thing to shaking their hand is pulling this out of the ground. He is this criminal, villain, mastermind, whatever you want to call him. Yeah. But he also was a kid out at this farm. I yeah. mean, he was a teenager he out was. here. That's right. I have to ask the two of you especially, as family members, Dillinger kind of has this reputation sometimes as like a Robin Hood character. How do you see him? If he hadn't got such a raw deal the first time he went to jail. Because he did almost 10 years, right? Took his young adult life away from him. Right. The sentiment that Dillinger got a raw deal or a strict sentence for what he did uh, was felt in the town, so right. much so that they signed a petition to try to lower his sentence. So you see him as kind of a product of the system? Yeah, he, basically. He, he came out hardened from jail. Exactly. Yeah. Newsreel footage of Dillinger's father from after John's visit to the farm reveals the emotional toll the crime spree took on the family. I don't know where my son John is at. If John could be exonerated from this crime and come back home, I think he'd make a good citizen or a good officer of some kind. This is something really special. It is. So there you go, a little piece of family history right there. Pretty cool. This farm is like, it's like a history book. It is. And we're just peeling one yes. page at a time out of the ground. Exactly. So there's yep. more to be done no, here. I agree.